All right, the House has just voted on a bill that aims to force the sale of TikTok or ban the app in the United States. Scott McFarlane is following all of this uh, from Capitol Hill. Uh, he is going to join us on the phone. We're also going to get uh, a report from Weijia Jiang, who's covering this from the White House perspective. But Scott, first, let's begin with you. Uh, walk us through what just happened here. Yeah, thanks for bearing with me. I'm in a part of the Capitol where cameras are not permitted. This bill to require TikTok to separate from its China-based owner or face a ban was like a 747, Vlad. It had the speed and force of a bill unlike one we've seen here in recent memory. It was just introduced a week ago yesterday. It sailed through a pivotal committee last Thursday, and then today, overwhelming vote of approval of this bill. You recall the U.S. House is in this strange state of dysfunction where every bill requires two-thirds majority to pass right now because of the gridlock, and it easily eclipsed the two-thirds threshold. Bipartisan support. There are Democrats and Republicans in leadership who back this thing. It now pushes to the U.S. Senate. But it's just striking how fast this went from start to finish. Eight days between introduction on the House floor to passage on the House floor. You just don't see that in this day and age. So this is kind of interesting because I do believe the former president, Donald Trump, uh, when he was president, was in favor of some sort of a TikTok ban. But he's done a bit of a flip-flop, and he's cons now he considers Facebook to be sort of what public enemy number and, one. And some or of one his of uh, events uh, in Congress are also doing a 180. Well, I'm curious about that, Scott. I mean, are we seeing the, uh, the former president, Donald Trump's flip-flop on TikTok having an influence on how this vote may go moving forward into the Senate? Yes and no. I mean, we've seen a couple of his supporters vote no today, even though they've been you know, vitriolic in their criticisms of TikTok, too. I would name one of them, Matt Gates of Florida, who has been unambiguous with his concerns about TikTok, and he voted no on this bill today. But here's the thing. Donald Trump's been a little mushy on this. He's obviously supported a TikTok ban in the past. He was very vocal in his support of that. But his recent criticisms have been a little bit half a loaf. He's saying you can't ban TikTok or else you'll give Facebook too much power. Of course, he doesn't like Facebook because after January 6th and the insurrection, Facebook banned him. <laughs> um, but it's not a clear-cut vote this down or I'll come get you in your primaries type of denunciation. So there is some wiggle room for Republicans to vote against, or to vote against TikTok. But here's the thing. This still has to go through the U.S. Senate, and there's an awful lot of time and space for opposition to form and galvanize, including any opposition from Donald Trump. Scott, one of the things that you said earlier uh, on CBS Mornings, and I would like you to break it down for our audience, is you said that uh, if this passes the House, and it looks like it will, uh, that when it moves to the Senate, uh, it may die there. Uh, are Senate Republicans not on the same page in this particular case as uh, 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 Republicans in the House? To a degree, I talked to one of them, Marco Rubio, top Republican on the Senate Intelligence Committee, which is the relevant committee for this. And he says, yeah, he'd like to explore this, too. We want to look at this legislation. He may want to make some adjustments, but <laughs> that's the problem in the U.S. Senate. Any one U.S. senator can pause the clock, make an adjustment, force the issue, and slow things down. And the last thing you want, if you're trying to speed this to fruition and speed it into law, is to slow things down. I really think that's one of the factors of why this came to a vote so quickly. The supporters of the bill wanted to get this thing to the finish line before opposition mounted. Well, you can't do that in the Senate. The Senate doesn't work that way. Uh, all right, Scott McFarland reporting live for us uh, from Capitol Hill. Scott, thank you as always, my friend. You just, uh, if you're just with us, Scott, still on the phone, uh, you can already know that this is uh, past uh, the House of Representatives. Uh, that is what is being read there on the House floor. We'll let you get back to your reporting. Meanwhile, Weijia Jiang is joining us now from the White House to talk about this. Uh, so, Weijia, you know, uh, President Biden said if this bill uh, passed both the House and the Senate, he would sign it. What, so what's next? Well, as Scott was laying out, the U.S. Senate has to approve it first before it lands on the president's desk. But you're right. Uh, he recently said that if that were to happen, he would sign it. And just yesterday, the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, uh, seemed to endorse this bill as well because he said the question is all about private data and security. And he put it very simply. And he said this, do we want the data from TikTok? children's data, adults' data, to be going 
to be staying here in America or going to China because, of course, its parent company is China-owned ByteDance. And so that's pretty clear. And then the press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, went on to say that we welcome this bill. So it sounds like it does have the backing of the White House if the Senate were to greenlight it as well. Does this sort of put President Biden, though, in an awkward position, right? We already know that one of the concerns for a lot of voters is his age. And so, like, here he is now taking on TikTok, an app that a lot of people have a lot of fun with, a lot of people learn a lot from, even learn a bit about politics from. And now he's the guy that's going to kill, well, and, and, I mean, he and, won't be killing TikTok, but, yeah. you know, that's the way it's coming off. But, but also, uh, we, as you know, uh, and Marie, you as well, uh, people earn a living on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's, well, there's an economic <laughs> angle here. Guess who's, guess who's on TikTok, guys? The president. The Biden campaign. Yeah. The Biden campaign. <laughs> because you're right. Uh, there's you, The reach that this app has is like no other. The engagement, the obsession, if you will, because as we've mentioned before, the algorithm is so powerful. It knows you better than it knows yourself, which is exactly why the Biden campaign has launched efforts using the president, so he is actively participating in these TikToks to try to gain support and momentum from young people who are watching it for the 2024 election. And that is a huge question, guys, because the campaign says, look, we're using extra security precautions, we are using special devices. So then the question is, well, why can't the average American do that? Why can't the U.S install some sort of extra protection for people rather than, you know, asking this company to sell itself. But you're right also in that there could be a lot of backlash for this. In fact, all those creators and content uh, generators that we saw on Capitol Hill trying to gain support for this bill are expected to head right here to the White House shortly to make their message known because uh, this app is unique in that it's not just for fun. People rely on it for their livelihoods, uh, to make money, and and it's uh, the exact reason why it could be really controversial, guys, if the president signs this into law. All right, Ouija, thank you very much.